The big music. Well, the big music is a song. Do I talk to you or to the camera? Too long. Okay. The big music is a song I wrote in 1983. And it's about having a spiritual experience or feeling a calling to my spiritual nature. And I use the metaphor of the big music. So when I sing, I've heard the big music, what I mean is I've sensed a spiritual calling. But at the same time, with the Waterboys, I was making uh, a very dramatic, big screen sound. And journalists took my song title, The Big Music, and attached it to the sound. I like that, actually. I like that they did that. But to me, the phrase always means this sense of, of spiritual questing. When was the world at your feet? Well, the, the great central myth about the Water Boys, apart from, apart from I often get asked about, about the time when I made This Is The Sea and The Hole of the Moon. Because I think people would say that was when the world was at my feet. At least rock journalists would say that. And they often do. Because people were saying the Water Boys were going to be the next big stadium rock band. But you see, it was an illusion because the Water Boys were never that. Would never have been that. I was always more in the tradition of the the solitary, constantly changing singer-songwriters like Bob Dylan and David Bowie and Neil Young and the Beatles. I grew up with the Beatles and they were different on every album. And I was always in, in that mode. I always expected with every record my music would change. Not in the superficial way of, of an artist these days who has a new image or a new look with every album, but the essential sound stays the same. No, I wanted the sound of my band, the direction, the values to keep changing. And they did. And, and so in the 1980s, to be that kind of artist, no, the world was never going to be at your feet. Because to, to maybe if I'd been in the 1960s, yes. Or the first half of the 70s, but not in the 80s. In the 80s, to have the world at your feet and to, to pluck it, to harvest that, I would have needed to keep making the same sound over and over and keep doing it slightly bigger each time and ascend to the stadiums. But to me, to my sensibility, to my mind, that was a stupefying prospect that held no allure for me. I remember when Neil Young had his big hit with Heart of Gold. He said something that, that I really like. He said, Heart of Gold took me to the middle of the road and I quickly went to the edge because you met more interesting people. And, and that's my philosophy too. I didn't want to be in the, the center of 1980s rock music, playing to, to huge crowds and stadiums and making music that sounded as if it was drum machines and, and technological. I, I didn't want to go there. I wanted to make a, an ever-changing, mercurial, organic music. I don't make career steps. I'm a fucking rock and roller. I'm an artist. I follow the music where it takes me. And the music tells me what to do. And if the music is telling me, go acoustic, learn country music, that's what I'll damn well do. So that's what, what I damn well did. And, and to break the power of the labels, I had to get out of London, which is what I did. I moved to Ireland where, where those voices couldn't reach me and those hands couldn't steer me. And I followed the music where I sensed it should go and I made what I thought was some of the best music of my life with the Fisherman Blues record. Sky above with light in my head. You in my arms. 
the eighties. Well, we just talked about the eighties. You know, the, the eighties were so bad. I had to invent my own. The eighties was the decade that taste forgot. It was a terrible decade for music. Awful. Prince was the best thing about the 1980s. And when I listened to his music from that era, it sounds so dated. The sounds, those terrible gated snare drums and gated reverbs and the prog programming. I really don't like 80s music. And, and for me, the golden age of music is from about 1956 to 1972, uh, when we didn't know how not to make great music. And then something got lost. Uh, and in the 1980s, I see culturally and also socially, we surrendered so many of the gains that, that we'd made in the 50s and 60s. And I think it was a dreadful time for music, dreadful. What happened in the 1980s with greed being legitimized is one of the worst things I've seen in my lifetime. And I see that it spread to music. Now when I look at young bands, young kids, they look like young businessmen. They think like young businessmen. They come out of colleges, colleges that supposedly teach you how to do rock and roll. Nah. The sweetest melody. The sweetest melody. Paul McCartney probably wrote the sweetest melodies. Here, there and everywhere. That period from about 66 to 69, Paul was, he was on fire, man, melody-wise. The long and winding road. Whew. You never give me your money. All those beautiful. Nobody can deny that there's something How Irish are you? I live in Ireland. And my ancestors on my father's side came from Ireland. They were McCormacks. And my mother's family, who are McLaughlins from the, the Scottish Hebrides, are said to have come from Ireland centuries ago. But whether they did, I don't know. So there's a little bit of Irish in me from way back. But I'm a Scotsman, I'm Scottish, and I, I'm proud to be Scottish. Uh, and, and I'm amused to be a Scotsman who lives in Ireland. They're a funny bunch, the Irish. My God, they're a funny bunch. I love them, but they're strange. Your wildest moment. I think it, Wild is another of these words, you see. What do you mean by wild? Do you mean most dissolute, most bohemian, most drunken? Wild in that sense? Or do you mean wild in terms of inspiration? It's wildness is a... Anthony Thistlethwaite, our old sax player, he once put a little sticker on the piano player's piano on the top note that said, wildness note, please play in every song. And for him, the highest note was the wildest. For him, the higher, the higher in melody you went, the wilder. Not for me. I think you can be going up the scale and then you can suddenly drop down and double the note and it's wilder. I, I, I learned from Tom Verlaine's solo on Marky Moon. He's going up the skin do and da and do and da and do and da da and da and do da da and da and he's going up and then suddenly he doesn't go up anymore. He drops down an octave, but he brings in another string and he doubles it, and suddenly a new freedom is is opened in the solo. So I don't think you have to keep going higher to get wilder. You can you can drop back down and expand the the focus to get wilder. <laughs>